Let's hit it. Reparations, reparations. You know it's time for the reparations. Yes, sir. This is Black Views, bringing you the Black News. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening as well. Hey, that's on crank, don't it? Ah, boy, hold on, hold on one second, hold up. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so let's get right to it. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So today our topic will be on reparations, as you can see here. And you can see all these uh, <clears throat> look like little potholes with with ladders that are giving the opportunities to come up from out of the, the hole and climb out of the hole and be on even ground. You see the even ground around? See, see the hole? You are down in that hole, bruh. We're down in that hole. We, we don't have an even ground. Like when the immigrant comes here to America, he is on the even ground. He is on even ground. And so what reparations would do is allow us to be on even ground. Just to be on even ground. Imagine what it would be like to, to wake up every day and you're and 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 you're just focused on how you're going to build your life how you're going to build your neighborhood the, the common thug on your on your corner on your on, he's going to get reparations if his parents not his parents but if his forefathers served slavery and was here before the 1800s Right, because there were some free people that were here doing slavery, but they were foundational Black Americans. Just imagine waking up and there's no trauma in your heart. You know, you, you're going, you're going. Actually, when you do go to school, you, you can go to school and not have no stress. Just learn, focus on the lessons of the day. Imagine how your counterparts are. Okay, the masters, sons, and daughters. Just imagine. They go and they can focus on the lesson. Have plenty to eat. There's, there's the crime of, of having to get from the bus stop back to your house. Have to worry about whether, you know, your ass going to get whipped. You're going to get your ass jumped. You're going to get robbed. You know, all all this complexity plays into the mind of a young person. To walk out and go to the store. And have to be concerned if there's a threat. So maybe I need to carry a gun. So that I can protect myself. That's the psychology. The psycho, psycho, psychology of it. Just remember, all those people that are saying that we shouldn't get um, reparations and um, we aren't deserving of reparations, they don't live in your neighborhood. They don't see every day what the struggle is for black people, how our forefathers were slaughtered, always trying to bring crime in to justice. Whenever a black man spoke of of having rights, they, you know they, they they really they wanted to make him a criminal. Make him a criminal? Why? Because it even says what well, it says it in what the, I can't the thirteenth I think it's the thirteenth amendment. You was you were basically still a slave, 
And these are for us. Th these laws were for us, not for them immigrants coming over here who treat who treat black people like pure hell back in their own countries. So today, I have a video and a couple topics I wanted to talk about. Just imagine what our world would be like. Well, no, but where I mean, there'll always be black struggle because there'll always be those that'll try to take from us what we have. Well, just imagine the ability to create industry, the end, the ability to create banking, the ability to decide for um, foundational black Americans what our education is going to be like. Just imagine that world. What a beautiful thing. So let's move on. First of all, I want to thank you for coming and visiting. I also want you to notice the Cash App. Please comment. Also, like and please subscribe. I need you. In order for me to bang on this drum every day. As grassroots and black media. Bang on them drums about reparations. About the things to correct our lives. I need your help. So let's move on. California's first in the nation statewide reparations task force is meeting today and tomorrow in downtown Sacramento. And members are working on recommendations for state lawmakers on what form reparations should take in the state of California. California's first in the nation statewide reparations. The first thing I want, first thing I want to say is I want to say, um, you know, there were there were many uh, reparation uh, meetings and debates, but this is the one that I saw that that will be easy. That I thought that would be easy for me to give the plan, the lesson plan on for today. Other than that, I mean, of course, we know Tariq Nashi. You know, he attended uh, several meetings to uh, set the record straight on who is supposed to receive reparations. Um, but I do have this clip here that I thought that was um, interesting. Uh, that will better explain. Um, what I'm trying to say. So let's go. Operations Task Force is meeting today and tomorrow in downtown Sacramento, and members are working on recommendations for state lawmakers on what form reparations should take in the state of California. And the goal is to help make amends for the generations of harm to African Americans caused by slavery. Generations of harm. When you listen to white supremacists, they'll they'll make you think that. There is no black generation that basically the only people that suffered were the people that were actually in slavery, that their generations after them are not suffering and did not suffer from the trauma, the captivity, the free labor, the constant, constant, constant barrage of mistreatment of a people. And it's the longstanding effects in society. Becca Hobbegger brings us the conversation from today. Capital, money, reparations. That will stimulate this economy for the 2.6 million blacks in California. And he has a point. That will stimulate the economy. So let's roll. Dozens of people lined up to speak at day one of the California Reparations Task Force's March meeting held this month in Sacramento. They offered various perspectives on how reparations should look for black Californians. You can never repay for the damage have been done to black people in America. So I want to be very clear, land, land, land. Healthy land. Healthy not land, not toxic land. The white farmers all around him had... I thought this, this uh, part of the skit was very interesting this lady here um how she speaks on the community that was created but the first thing i wanted to say is that you know you're going to hear a lot of black people that are going to say we want a lot of different things but we got to go with what makes sense he said he wants land and then he said oh we want good land you think they're going to give us good land i mean if it, if we ask for land and we don't have no money to to uh to cultivate that land, we don't have no money to, to I mean, nothing. You just got land. And the most what people would do is just sell it anyway. So we might as well get the cash payments, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about that on what I think uh, we should get. Just my opinion. Uh, and I also want to put this out there. I'm not an economist. 
I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not any of that I, I am I'm a black citizen okay foundational black American with an opinion and these are my ideas on how I feel reparations should go what I think that would benefit us benefit benefit us the best okay I'm not a leader I'm part of a lineage foundational black Americans I'm not I'm not in charge I'm not trying to be the leader of that we are all we know who we are okay you got names like Jackson Smith Johnson those type of names and and other names as well but the point I'm trying to say is that I mean we are a lineage of people so let's go let's get back to uh, the lesson Wells, we didn't. Gloria Puro Dyer came from Roseville to share her family story. Growing up in Allensworth was an extraordinary experience uh, in terms of being able to see how racism affected an entire town. She grew up in the historically black Central Valley community of Allensworth, named for its founder, Colonel Allen Allensworth, a community built by and for black people. It thrived in the early 1900s, but dwindled in subsequent decades with a loss of water rights and many leaving for World War II. At the time, in the 1950s, uh, it was pretty much an all black town. We had a 63-acre farm. I mean, we didn't have wells, but the white farmers around us, they all had wells. This one white farmer who was across the road, he had his well, he would water his fields, and you know, the water would run into the ditch. If he saw us let, bring our cows out to drink water out of the ditch, he would tell us to get them over, back away from. Now think about how diabolical it is. It's, a plan, it's obviously a plan that everybody around you has a well and you don't. So, so when they, when they, when they work together, they worked around these black people. You know what I'm saying? And systematically create situations so that we would die off or we would sell off or we would leave. This is why reparations is old. Water in the ditch. That is hatred. I didn't experience the brunt of racism like I would have maybe if I had lived in Mississippi or someplace else. But I saw enough of it to realize the damage that could be Dead. She says growing up, her parents told her about her enslaved ancestors. They were treated like animals, only worse. She says chattel slavery has done generations of damage. That's why she's advocating for reparations, not only in the form of land and money, but also mental health resources. There are many who still have not been able to reach anywhere near their potential because of the psychological harm. And so even if money, for example, is put in somebody's hands, but if the internal uh, issues have not been resolved and healed, that person will go right on doing some pathological thing, possibly. Much of this goes back to the legacy of slavery and the psychological harm that was done to African Americans. These are people that, that survived this, that witnessed this. There's other people this lady's age that's still alive today that witnessed systematic racism in America. And it's like, what bothers me is that every other group has movies, they have documentation, and all day long we can hear about these other groups and how they have persevered. Which is cool, man, hey man, which is, which is outstanding, they persevered. But when foundational black Americans begin to speak on our history and begin to speak on the injustices that we we go through we're seen as divisive we're seen as troublemakers somehow we're seen as terrorists and we, we can't even speak on the things that that cripple us as a nation of people so let's go ahead and move on let's finish this out individually and as families. Some commenters called in, two people raising objections to the whole effort. I don't believe a single person deserves restitution in any form unless they are a Native American. Why is the state of California even doing Listen to that. Unless they are a Native American. You know, listen. Black people in America are the Native Americans. There were black people already here. That that's why they talk about the freedmen. See, the, see, there were black people that were already here. Okay, look at our forefathers. 
Look at our mothers. Look at our brothers. Look at our grandfathers. The noses, the faces, the these same Indians that they try to say who you know. You know. Then you have five dollar Indians. You have people that came in and just facilitated the people and took their legacy and, and paid because the person that was taking the roles at the time was a corrupt individual. He took that money to give and say that they were uh, Native American Indians so they can receive reparations. Come on, man. Stop playing. Indian only means savage anyway. Okay. So there were tribes. Okay. You had tribes of people. There were black Indian tribes. As well as you had red Indian tribes. Many of those tribes. Those Indian tribes. Those, those red Indian tribes. Had slaves. That were us. That's why when you could look at us today. And you look at. Remember when you were younger. And you go to class. Look at all the different type of black people. We're all black people. We look good. We're beautiful. Some of us had had uh, kinkier hair, and some of us had nappier hair. We're all black. Let's move. This should be a federal thing, just like they did with the Japanese internment. But now, as far as federal, this should be state and federal, okay? Because just every state had had their laws. You had federal government that had federal laws and also executed these laws to keep racial injustice a part of a system that was systematic come on let's get that bread man because because once we have reparations for the for the for the state then we hitting that we hitting that federal you understand the federal is overall the state is just for those areas and that's fine that's cool because it was black people all over and whatever they sold uh they served slavery that's who we're gonna pay and that's what we got to pay because that's where they are today and then on top of that the stuff federal government got to come in and give you reparations so don't be fooled most people here and on the phone came with suggestions for reducing the harmful and lasting impacts of chattel slavery on african americans and Becca's with us right now. Becca, what is next? I mean, what do reparations look like and then who will be eligible? Yeah, you know, at their January meeting, task force members agreed to recommend that the state of California create something called the California African American Freedmen Affairs Agency to implement their recommendations and process claims. Now, those recommendations, those are due to the legislature in a final report this summer. Now, as for who would be eligible, the task force voted last year that black Californians who descended from enslaved Africans or from a free black person living in the U.S. prior to the end end of the 1800s would be eligible for monetary reparations there you go that's a plan i mean that that is a plan but we need our black scholars to come up with the plan that we feel that is i mean that's best for foundational black americans so thank you for that fine report there so let's move on to the next scene and in the next scene um i wanted to talk about I'm going back to the original scene when I talked about imagining what our communities would be like, what type of life we would live. So just imagine, you know, we have uh, cash reparations, economic justice. And remember, they owed us 40, 40 acres in a meal, by, by the way, but they didn't give us the 40 acres in the meal. So you owe, you owe us. We're, going, we're just going to throw that on top of what you already owe us. OK, no problem. We'll take it out. In fact, and then we're going to take these cash payments and installments so we don't break the country. OK, we don't want to we don't want to shut it down, but we do need our payments. So our economists are going to come together and come up with a plan over a period of time where you can make these payments. So we'll continue to live. So, cash payments for every descendant of slavery, okay, in America. Every America. Now, we're not talking about the, uh, the, uh, the immigrants that came, you know, and they got mistreated. We're not talking about, you know, other groups that maybe, you know, listen, file your claim. If y'all had, you know, if you feel like you were injustice, file your claim, okay? The same way with the, cause, cause see what'll happen is when we start talking about reparations, then you start hearing about the Irish slaves and these like, hey, file your claim in England. Hey, those British blacks, 
file your claim in England. But uh, uh, if you're in Jamaica, file your claim in England. Okay, if you in the you in uh, uh, you know Belize, Central America, all those places where beautiful black people live that have also suffered, file your claim in England because or whoever those uh, uh, factors are that that held you in bondage. I get it. I love you. But right now we're talking about reparations in the United States for foundational black Americans. So these cash payments. I think the last time I I looked at it, I said two million. Two million for every foundational black American. I thought and, and that's <laughs> come on bro, what we went through, that that's still not enough. But two million. That's just my opinion. I ain't I'm not saying that this is what it should be. I'm just putting something out there. Once again I'm not an economist. I sure would like for a black one to come forward and give us what he think is best. I could listen to that. So, two million. That's that. That's what. That's what I see for every baby, every child, everybody in your household. Straight up, baby. Hey, look, baby, mama's gonna make out on this because the ones that got the five kids in the house, boom, 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 boom. That, that's like what? That's twelve million. That's you plus the five kids. Nah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 12 minutes. That makes six. You plus the five kids, that's two. That's 12 million. And that's what they're going to pay. That's what they got to pay. And we can't come up off of that. Okay? You got to pay for the injustice that you did to to us as a nation. All right? First of all, we had our homeland is right here. Right here. That you're sitting on top of. We've cultivated, we've cultivated this land from east to west. We need that bread. So, go ahead and hand it over. Then... Okay. The next thing I looked at was banks. We need banks. We need black banks. So, so let's say we would have the first African, no, the first uh, foundational black American bank or black bank or whatever bank that we know this bank is for black people. Now, I think it's, it's important. You have to understand the reason why we had foundational black American. You have to understand. Any African can come to America and say, oh, I'm African American. Like you have Korean Americans. Like you have different Japanese Americans. Oh, I'm Japanese American. I'm, 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 I'm African American. All of a sudden, that's how you hear you have uh, these tethers that infiltrate us as a people. Because the name they use, they'll, they'll say, "Oh, Black Americans." They're going around committing crimes and shit, doing all kind of wild shit, saying they, 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 you know, they're African American, and they, they, they just some African uh, 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 swindler that comes here to do petty crimes and do scams. See, I mean, that's straight up. That, I mean, that that's what's going on. So when we say foundational Black American, it is to represent. She. From beginning to time, the white supremacists have uh, have given us a name, told us we were black, told us you 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 uh you Negroes, told us that you were colored. They told us all these things, so we never we never had a name. We 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 never uh we we never said who we are. We can only say what they told us we are. So that's why you hear all these different type of names, all these different type of identifying uh credentials for black people that they gave us. We say foundational black as a representation for those that were foundational to the conception of this country that built this country from scratch. Okay, so we don't want to get that we don't want to get that confused. So we're looking at the bank here, and we want black banks. We want a head. We want a uh, we want the best black bank bankers in America um, to to head these banks, right down from custom service to operations, and those banks are going to work to create other black banks. This this is for blacks now. You know you got you have Asian American bank or whoever who or whoever wants to put their money in they can but these are black founders. These will be black banks for the purpose of the black people in America. So that's how I look at it. These banks these banks will provide loans. First first beginning uh the banks will be funded uh by uh the United States government. 
Yeah, that money, that money for reparations. After we get our cash payments, they will also put money into the bank, uh, uh, to a bank, to start that bank, get that bank up and running, to give loans to every black foundational American, anytime they want it, whether it be for their home, whether it be for their business, whatever. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why in a second this is this is important. And I'm going to talk about it because what you have to understand is there are going to be people that's going to get their reparations and they're going to, I mean, it's going to blow it. That's on them. You know what I'm saying? Fine, let them blow it. But they may procreate and have children. Their children will always get a loan from this bank. Do you see? And those generations that come after us will always get a loan from that bank. So even though if we save this money and we pass it down, like many of us will, but there's always going to be 10% that's just going to gonna fuck it off. Because then that's in every group. They're going to fuck it off. But these will be put in place to maintain, at least for your children, to ensure that they can prosper as well. So let's move on to the next one real quick. Education. Yes, education. I mean, education we can pay for with our cash payments that we get, but no. They're going to put money into this for free education, also for foundational black Americans. Why that's important? Once again, if if, if, my, if mommy and daddy, you know, fuck that money because they could be crackheads or for whatever reason, they're always, there's always a system in place so that... Um, these young black Americans that come, these young black foundational black Americans that come after us and after generations after that have institutions, real institutions. We got HBCUs that ain't shit. You can obviously see that they ain't shit. They ain't, they're not even teaching about how we got in the situation we are and who's responsible for it and how we can recreate. Recre That's what an educational institution is supposed to do, especially if it's of four foundational black Americans. Yeah, it's a foundational black American school. You can't change the curriculum. If white people want to go to the university, fine. They don't go to the university. But they're not changing the curriculum. Okay? <laughs> they, they, no, you have no say in changing the curriculum. All right. So let's move on. Let's see. Do I have... What, I, what else do I have? Industry. Yeah, industry. Industry is created. Industries is what a group of companies that are related based on their primary business activities. So you can have different industries like IT industry, uh, the agricultural industry. These will be taught in the in the real black uh, universities. Remember, we still need these things like education. We still need banks. We still need uh, uh, um, we still need these. We still need these. Are these are going to be pillars in the community? So regardless, what happens to whatever money that cash payments that may not get passed down because you know you, you know you have a, a a person that's that that screwed off the money. Regard regardless of that, you always have these pillars in place that black people will stay on the. Remember, we want to stay on that common ground right here. You understand what I'm saying? We want to stay. We, we want to stay where you see the level. That's where we want to be, and see, that's where we're not right now. We're not on that level. We're not on that even playing field. We're not where we should be. Where we're supposed to be, at least on the even. I mean, honestly, if you think of people that's been here since the conception of this country. I mean, we should be well above the even level playing field. But it seems like everybody moved up except for us. And now you want to bring in some immigrants and you want to give them free stuff. And let them and and and, and I'm, I'm looking at you, Uncle Sam. Yeah, you looking back. You want to you want to give them free shit. Let us let them sit up in here, and 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 I mean, pff, I'm done with it. This is where I'm going to land my plane for today. First of all, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for coming to visit my page. 
This is Black Views bringing you the black news. And once again, do not forget to subscribe. Also, like and please hit that cash app with over there. Yeah, hit that cash app because that cash app is what's going to help with the research and what needs to be done to continue to beat this drum so that we can get it out there. Every black person, one black person, tell another black. And guess what? Like I said, white supremacists are always going to hate what we saying and always try to make you feel uncomfortable about what we're doing. Have a good day.